I respect Colin Kaepernick, but there's one thing that I don't respect. And I said it when I get the opportunity and to get on the stage to say it, I would say it and I love him to death. So it ain't no hate or nothing like that. But brother, you had the biggest opportunity in the world to create jobs, build jobs, give jobs to people. The people that you was talking about, the people that, that you so-called standing up for, the people who stood beside you, the people who lost their jobs because of you. Where you at? I ain't heard from you. He brought the awareness. And that's why I respect him. But what's the call to action? There wasn't one. There wasn't no call to action. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to All right, so... I'm kind of confused with this whole statement that he gave because I didn't really understand what it is he's saying that Colin Kaepernick didn't do. Now, first off, before we even get into that, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the Observer Live and Ucha whenever if you haven't already done so. I'm trying to kind of go through and brainstorm what exactly is Des Bryant really got a beef with because I don't understand where the beef lies here in this situation. Now, is he doing maybe? Something? Know what he's got going on either. I mean, I know he was playing last year towards the uh, in the season with Baltimore. Maybe he's got something going on outside of football as well. You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, there's there's not real clarity in this in this. Uh, like I said, and I guess this is the point because other 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 you know media outlets are picking this up. Des Bryant called out Colin Kaepernick's protest, saying it didn't have a call to action. Oh, the internet wasn't having it. Okay, so he got his ass roasted for saying that. Okay. And again, I think that that kind of, I'm, I can't totally disagree because I don't really know what he's talking about here. Right. I'm like, well, what? Call to action. I thought, you know, taking the knee was the call to action. You know what I mean? I thought that was the call to action. Right. Take a knee, you know, in silent protests. Like, I don't and, expect the man to have all the answers on, you know, day two. Yeah, like I <laughs> think that he was meant to have, you know, he but this is why a lot of us don't step out there like that because this is kind of backlash and people, you know, don't want to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, that call to action is usually a, it's risky to do things like that. But let's talk a little bit about this situation here with Des Bryant. So, what did you think of the whole kneeling thing, the whole kneeling drama from like 2016 with Colin Kaepernick? I guess that's like the, the the best spot to start with, because sure. you know we got to both kind of know where we where we're at with it, and and we we know the details I'm sure. So it's it's not a matter of knowing what what happened and how what you know what the claims were made by Kaepernick. But where does you stand in that whole situation as far as like just your perspective as a as a, as a former player, like you know? And I, I tell you, I'm glad I was already done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is, you know, quite a pickle. You know, and I I know some people were getting pressure from the teams and all sorts of folks you know, to do this or do that. And you know, in, in hindsight, you know, I was pretty established at the time, you know, or a couple years before that. So maybe that'd have been a little different. But imagine you're a later round pick or something, a young guy. You're not, you know, solidified on a roster like that. It, it's, it's tough. It's tough to, you know, stand on that principle when, when them checks could easily stop. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. And, and you know, I find it very, very curious because when you look at it from one end, you know, players on teams, we, we were – you know, try, players are trying to find their way through a situation like this. And, you know, like you said, there is that element of there's guys who do have a voice and can say something on the team without necessarily fearing repercussions. And then there are some who just, I just got here on, on Wednesday. <laughs> what y'all trying to do to me? If, if I, if I do this, I'll probably be gone on Sunday or, or Monday. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't know, you don't know. And that, and that's one thing that NFL owners have had over players and that they have that power to just cancel a dude's livelihood just like that. So there is a level of fear there, even if a player does agree with the sentiment that, that Colin was using in his uh, kneeling, 
you know, there is a uh, there's a level of hesitation from some players to join in on that. While on the other end, you have players who are solidified, which are probably about 65 to 75 percent of the team is solidified in there as far as the 53 men. Then there's probably like 50 percent out of that 75 that those guys are core guys that you that aren't going anywhere. Right. So there's a there's layers to it, but you know, in in that respect, it wasn't necessarily the players versus the owners. It was the it was really the players, it was really the NFL itself versus its own fans. Sure. Because it became, you know, political. It became a political situation that people were choosing sides on uh, for. Colin Kaepernick had a a Green Beret who gave him the advice, hey, take a knee. And I think that that, you know, I think with that, at least now you have a level of of, uh, direction because kneeling is something that is, you know, was better than him just sitting on the bench just looking like he was, you know, lost. Right. But you have kneeling, which – across football and across sports kneeling is generally seen as a sign of respect when you take a knee when you're at the end of practice your coach says hey everybody up take a knee man everybody takes a knee has their attention to the coach like and that, that's with that's with almost every team sport out there yeah. take a knee is like that's a traditional thing you do to be like at attention to be you know to, to show respect and I think that that was completely flipped around in regards to the way that it was made political in the public is that now kneeling was like a sign of disrespect when it's actually quite the opposite. Like traditionally it's always been quite the opposite from that. Right. He was an athlete who took a stand that really cost him his career, but Hey, that was just, he, it really was his choice to make. He could have went, he could have still been playing sports now. If you want to. Yeah. I feel like he had a, maybe a, initiative or coalition but the few guys that were still active uh yeah I felt like him and malcolm jenkins had eric, something reed, I know, eric reed yeah i thought there was something you know something there um i mean i'm not I sure know, malcolm if, jenkins is a little bit of a snake in my opinion he certainly he has some sideways yeah he he's definitely used that for uh He's using that for, him for okay. selfish reasons it's not it's not for he's not truly behind it because when it was Deshaun Jackson, you know, saying some anti-Semitic stuff about, you know, uh, Hitler and the Jews, uh, Malcolm Jenkins came out and was like, we got to stay focused, y'all. We can't let them distract us. Like, motherfucker, somebody, one of our own just went out there and said some stupid ass shit. Why don't you say something? Why don't you stand up in front of the streets like you did before and call for him to be held to account? You know, because not only was he saying some shit that really was uh, not even like true. Like, first off, he quoted a quote that was that he said was attributed to, to Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Hitler didn't even say it. It was still fucked up what it what he said, <laughs> but that's not that wasn't his. That wasn't his quote. You got that one wrong, Chief. <laughs> and and you 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 know a denigrating statement towards. Uh, people of you know Jewish descent, sure, and he without even having the self awareness that to to understand that the owner of your football team that you're on is actually a Jewish guy who was doing a documentary on the Holocaust at the time. Oh. So I had a way to uh, read the room, <laughs> right. and uh, good job reading the room there. And you know, but to his credit, he humbled himself met with some Holocaust survivors, went to the Holocaust Museum, got educated on what the heck was going on. But still, there is that deafening silence of of players in the NFL who just weeks before that were on a, you know, got together to do a video demanding that Roger Goodell say Black Lives Matters. Well, you got to keep that same energy for other people too because everybody gets, you know, everybody gets bullshit that way sometimes. So you got to be able to, it's defending the, on the principle, not based on who it is. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. So, you know, kind of uh, went on a little bit of a rant there on it, but I think personally, Colin Kaepernick, 
I'm not gonna say I'm 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 50 50 on him to be honest because there the intent he followed up on some of the sentiment that he was preaching about. He followed up on some of it by by by, by with his money and with his actions, but right also here. he had an opportunity to kind of squash everything, get back in the league, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and still be able to do what you want to do as far as being an activist. Still be able to do that, and you decided that you would l- rather let. People who are around you whispering in your ear, trying to trying to just create something viral for another big moment, Hijack you know, shit. influence you into doing some into doing some shit that really just close the door. Now the NFL can just throw their fingers up and be like, "Hey, we tried. fuck them, <laughs> fuck them." We yeah, gave them a shot, boys. We did everything. We gave them a shot. <laughs> but really? he kind of, uh, I think he misplayed it. I think he definitely miscalculated it. When he when he did that, when he had that whole stand up talking about it's the people, we here. Stop hiding. It's like, bro, this is not 1952. You are not, you know, you're not Malcolm X standing over there. Like, there. Like, like that's not Malcolm X. Like, like just you should have just did the workout. Use the system to gain what you want. You use them. They get yeah. you back in. You're getting some money. You can now start don't you know using that money that you're making to. To try and you know f- try and follow up on on building on your cause, and he he never did that. So uh, at the end of the day, he he really cost himself, I think, some money and leverage because oh, now he has none. He has no leverage whatsoever, which is which is why we have not heard from him since. I was say, I'm not sure what he's doing now, that or what jobs that he was supposed to be making uh, or, or through, through whatever process he he, he did use. I, I'm I'm not sure what he's done. Since that time, and you know, no. I mean, he's not obligated to. I'm not saying that, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he has no obligations, sure. But um, I don't, I'm not mad at him. I'm not. I'm not mad yeah. at Adam that he that he. You know, he maybe he doesn't want to to be. Uh, you know, want cameras to be. You know, he doesn't want the attention for sure. things that he's doing. Maybe he just wants to do things behind the scenes. And, and, just, be you know, and, and be that, and be a philanthropist in that respect. Right, he could be doing a lot, but you know, we he just could don't be know. Doing a lot, and we have no idea. He could be doing a lot of things, and we got no ideas doing them, and we're sitting here talking shit about him. But. Oh.